México es famoso a nivel mundial por ser uno de los países que más azúcar consumen. Azúcar en un refresco, azúcar en la comida, azúcar en los cafés, en las conchas, en las galletas. Y por eso queríamos tener esta conversación. Jesse, welcome so much. I'm so sad we can't have this conversation in Spanish. I'm sorry, Martha. I understand everything, but my Spanish is not good enough to speak it. You're in Mexico with this new book called La Revolución de la Glucosa, El Método, sí. with great recipes and with the whole explanation of why our body is working the way it works and what we can do to better our health. Exactly, Marta. And the basis of my work has shown me that most of us experience glucose spikes on a daily basis because we eat so much sugar and refined carbs. And these spikes lead to many consequences, from cravings to fatigue to brain fog, poor sleep, and then long-term type 2 diabetes. So this is what I'm here to solve. I want to be very clear. Type 2 diabetes is not a genetic disease that you can't do anything about. Type 2 diabetes is a disease caused by how we're eating. And most of us are getting closer and closer to diabetes without even knowing. We don't realize we're doing that to our own body. Today, one billion people in the world have type 2 diabetes or prediabetes. One billion. And the number is increasing every year. Now, Mexico, because that's where our main audience is, although they're listening from all parts of the world, we have a serious problem with sugar and a serious addiction with sugar. Is sugar an addiction? Absolutely. When you eat sugar, dopamine gets released in your brain. Dopamine is the pleasure molecule. It's the same molecule you get when you go to the casino, when you have sex, when you play video games. It's very addictive. And sugar gives us that molecule very easily. Every time we eat sugar, we create a big glucose spike in our body. After a spike, there's a drop. And that drop activates the craving center in our brain. And it tells us, Marta, eat more sugar, eat more sugar. So we're on this addiction roller coaster. It's very difficult. ¿Por qué creen que a las 12 del día todo el mundo está buscando ir al Oxxo y al 7-Eleven? Porque sientes que te estás arrastrando y tu cuerpo, la forma en que funciona es que después de que le diste el azúcar, empieza, dame azúcar, quiero azúcar, dame azúcar. Entonces bajas por unas galletas al 7-Eleven. You know what the 7-Eleven exactly. is? Yes, of course, Mada. And, so, and you know what? Is it logical? Does it make sense that usually it's like midday yeah. or 11 or 1, depending on when you had breakfast? Absolutely. You feel that you're dying. And mm -hmm. that's when you go down to the 7-Eleven to buy some cookies. And it's not just craving. You also feel exhausted and super hungry. Claro. And most people are not able to cut out all sugar like you have. And yeah. so what I do in my book is I teach you tips to eat the sugar with less roller coaster. So less addiction to sugar that you're creating. Perhaps. So what is the other way to have a decent amount, a decent intake of sugar, mm -hmm. but do it the right way without the, the, the spikes? So the other way is the four hacks, the four principles that I talk about in my new book. Savory breakfast, vinegar. Veggie starter and movement. Excuse me? We'll go over them. Uh, again? <laughs> again? Re-breakfast? Okay, savory breakfast. So salty, okay. not sugary breakfast. Okay. Then vinegar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you about the power of vinegar. Uh, okay. Then vegetables uh -huh. at the beginning of your meal. Uh -huh. And movement. Breakfast, vinegar, veggies, movement. Can you explain what a savory breakfast yes. looks like? Because savory for me uh -huh. are waffles and maple syrup. No, that's not savory. <laughs> The problem is most people in the morning, they start with sugar. They have an orange juice. They have sweet cereal. And that causes the biggest glucose spike of the day. And then it creates the cycle of addiction for the whole day. So we need to stop doing that. In the morning, we have savory fruits like protein. And I have a lot of recipes in the book. I have a lovely hummus and avocado and tuna recipe. I have egg cups you can make. You can have Greek yogurt with some berries and some nuts. A ton of recipes in here. The best thing to have for breakfast, the easiest thing, is leftovers from dinner. That's your savory breakfast. Super easy. Keeps you super steady. Lo que hay que comer, y en el libro vienen mil recetas buenísimas, es huevos, vegetales, eh, una copa, por ejemplo, de yogur griego, con berries, con nueces, mm -hmm. eh, jitomate. The leftover from dinner. Ah, y algo importantísimo. Por ejemplo, dice Jesse, una gran idea para el desayuno es comerte las sobras de la cena, siempre y cuando no sean unos molletes, ¿no? Pero si cenaste 
carne deshebrada y una ensalada, desayuna eso. Perfect. Tinga, desayuna eso. That would be fantastic. And this completely changes your day. You have a very different experience. You're not hungry all the time, no cravings. It's amazing. It's very powerful. And in the first week mm -hmm. of La Revolución de la Glucosa, El Método, uh -huh. we start yeah. with the savory breakfast. That's week one. Okay, talk to me about vinegar. Okay, so vinegar is magical. I'm going to teach you in week two how to use vinegar before you eat something sweet so that you still eat the sweet food that you love with less of a glucose spike. So here's what you do. One tablespoon of vinegar in a big glass of water before having a cookie, a cake, a whatever, that reduces the glucose spike by 30% of the sweet food. And if you have like gastritis or colitis or acid reflux. Unless your doctor tells you not to have vinegar. Uh, yeah. In most yeah. people, even with those conditions, vinegar is totally it's fine. Like It can be any kind of vinegar. White vinegar? White vinegar, cherry vinegar, apple cider vinegar, whatever you want. Just not balsamic, which is very thick because that has sugar in it. Okay. So that's a really powerful hack. Amazing science behind it. And you'll see you'll be able to eat the sweet food you love with less of a crash afterwards. Yeah, but I mean, how many times a day can you be like drinking vinegar just because mm -hmm. you want to have another damn cookie? As many times as you want. I mean, not too many, but yeah. you know, once in a while is okay. Remember, my audience, I'm teaching people who have never even thought about their diet or changing what they're eating. So it's one step at a time. Entonces, la primera semana ya tienes tu desayuno salado. La segunda semana ya estás one usando day. vinagre una vez al día. Y week number three. Veggie starters. Okay, okay, so in week three, once a day, before lunch or before dinner, we're going to have a plate of vegetables at the beginning of the meal because vegetables contain fiber. And fiber at the beginning of a meal has time to make a protective shield in your intestine and reduce the glucose spike of the food you eat afterwards. Okay, you got so that? that's the first thing we're going to have. That's, yeah, exactly. Not soup. Not soup. Not soup. Before Which is what everybody dinner. has at the beginning. Soup. I know. Yeah. But if soup is chunky, it's okay. But you want to get that whole vegetable because that's, that's what has the fiber in it. Which but then the after the vegetables, yeah. whatever salad you're having. Eat then whatever you're normally having. Right? So just add the hacks and you'll see naturally you'll have smaller glucose spikes. You'll crave less sugar. You'll have more energy. It's really a wonderful method to take the on-ramp to the freeway. You see? Don't change what you're eating, just add the hacks in and you'll start feeling so much claro. better. Entonces, lo que está diciendo Jesse es, miren, si quieren tráganse la sopa de pasta. Nada más empiecen por favor con verduras, porque eso va a amortiguar que esa pasta, porque por si no sabían, and I think this is something that we need to talk about, eh, la pasta, eh, la harina blanca, uno pensaría que no es azúcar, mm. pero en el cuerpo... El bolillo, aunque no tenga arriba escarcha de azúcar como la concha, se convierte en glucosa. And that's something I think people need to understand. So there's two types of food that turn to glucose when you digest them. Sugars, so anything that is sweet, and starches. So that's pasta, rice, bread, tortillas. All of those also become glucose. So sugars and starches, we have to be careful about. They should be there for taste, for pleasure, but not as the main basis of our meals. No se trata de no comerlo nunca más, pero se trata de que el gran grueso de tu alimentación pues no sean azúcares y almidones. Mm -hmm. And they should be there for taste and pleasure if you want. Sí, claro. You know? O sea, son buenos para el placer, para el, darte el gusto, para mm -hmm. deli deli. But if you're only eating that, you're creating big glucose spikes. You're hurting your mental health, your physical health, you're hurting your energy, your sleep, your hormones, and you're going towards diabetes. Yeah. And week four, We're going to recruit wonderful allies, our mm -hmm. muscles. Yeah, our muscles. So our our muscles. muscles. You have good muscles. Oh, Look I've been training, you. girl. I've been training, girl. Well, I've been trying to get biceps, but it's quite hard. You know, I've been lifting and everything. Really? I'm so jealous of your biceps. It's all the protein ah. in this pancake, darling. <laughs> okay, so muscles are really cool because when you contract your muscles, they need energy. They need glucose to do so. And we can use this to our advantage. After one meal a day, in the fourth week of the method... We're going to move for 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be complicated going to the gym. It could be as simple as put your feet on the floor and do some calf raises. So go on to the toes of your feet like this for 10 minutes. The muscle in your calf is going to absorb glucose. I have lots of different options. So after one meal a day, 10 minutes of movement, and that's going to help reduce the spike of the meal. And I want to say one last thing. So mm -hmm. for this book, I ran a study on 4,000 people. 
who went through the method and shared their results. And the results have been incredible. 90% of people are less hungry, have fewer cravings. 40% of people with diabetes started reversing it. This really works and it's really easy. And it's such an amazing first step to help people get back to their health. I'm going to tell you something and I'm your best testimony, girl. Oh. There is not one day mm. that I woke up loaded. Yeah. I don't Gut have health. the puffy eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't have the bags under my eyes. I'm not retaining the amount of water, water. I used to retain before. Mm. And I'm much more energetic. Yeah, I mean, you, your energy is incredible. You look amazing. So, so the book is for sale everywhere? Yes. Okay. It's out. Ya está la venta en todas partes. Está en español. Se llama, es Editorial Diana. Cuatro semanas y cien recetas para deshacerte de los antojos, recuperar tu energía y sentirte increíble. La revolución de la glucosa. El método de Jessie Inchauspe, mejor conocida como The Glucose Goddess. Jessie, a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Martha. Thank you, girl. <laughs>